Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be chatting all about the Sephora Spring Savings Event. This is always one of my favorite videos to film. I'm going to be chatting all about all of my recommendations for the sale. We're gonna be going through all of my makeup, skincare, hair care, and body care recommendations. I pretty much do one of these videos every single time one of these Sephora events rolls around and I still stand by every single one of my recommendations. So if you are still wanting more recommendations beyond this video, I will link the playlist down below so that you can check it out. I did kind of tailor my recommendations also for the season that's to come, which is spring and summer, of course. To give you guys a quick rundown of the event, I have all the information here. Rouge members get 20% off starting April 1st. VIB members get 15% off starting April 5th. And insiders get 10% off starting April 7th. And all members get 30% off everything from Sephora collection starting April 1st, which is pretty cool as well. And then the whole event ends on April 11th. This video is also in collaboration and sponsored by Sephora, which is really, really awesome. They encouraged me to share some of my favorite picks with you guys. Every single recommendation that I have here is as always my own recommendation, but it's just really awesome that I'm also able to work with Sephora on this video as well. So with all that said, we have so much stuff to talk about. So let's get right into it and let's start off first with the makeup. So before we get into the actual foundations, I wanted to talk about this priming product that I have been really loving. This is a pretty new product in my life and I haven't yet spoken about it on my channel, so I really wanted to share with you guys today. It's the Danessa Myricks Yummy Skin Glow Serum. I don't have anything like this in my collection and I have a lot of glowy base products, but nothing quite like this with this type of texture. So this is called a glow serum and that's exactly what it is. So the texture is very serum-like and very hydrating. And so when you put it on your skin, it kind of blends into the skin very much like a skincare product. And because this is a skincare-like texture, it gives the skin this really gorgeous, very glossy skincare-like glow, but it's definitely one step and notch above a skincare glow because it does also have a very subtle kind of golden iridescence to it. It kind of just gives you a very subtle golden sheen. And because it is a serum, it also adds this cushiony texture to the skin, which just allows the foundation to glide on the skin really, really nicely. So you could totally wear this on its own and it's gonna give your skin a little bit of warmth and a little bit of that glow. Um, or of course you could layer it underneath all of your makeup. And especially for the summertime, this is going to be a product that I'm not gonna be able to stop using so I'm very much looking forward to that so now moving into foundation this is another product that I have been loving from Danessa Myricks and I've been testing this out quite a bit off camera and I'm finally ready to tell you guys all about it because I love it and it definitely has my stamp of approval so this is the yummy skin serum foundation it's from the same line as the glow serum I also don't quite understand why more people are not talking about this because it is Stunning like there's so many trending foundations right now And I'm just asking myself why this isn't one of them because honestly this this guy knocks out um, A lot of the other foundations that I've been trying like out of the park So I actually bought this thinking that it was going to be a light coverage skin tint for some reason every time I hear serum in a foundation name That's where my mind goes automatically. This is not light coverage. It is in fact the complete opposite It is very 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 full coverage a very small amount of this can cover your entire face very easily because of that really beautiful skincare like finish that it has even though it is so full coverage It still looks so fresh on the skin. It lasts really really well It doesn't feel heavy or sticky. This is going to be a strong statement But it's probably one of the best full coverage foundations that I've ever tried just because of how Stunning and fresh it looks on the skin. I am wearing it on my face right now because I really really wanted to show you guys what it looks like and it's just Beautiful. If you're wondering what shade I got, I am 6N and it matches me literally perfectly right now. The Kosas Revealer Foundation is another foundation that is very much on the same wavelength as the Yummy Skin. I have been wearing this nonstop. You guys already know that I'm a big fan of this. I did do a full review on my channel in case you want to check it out. I'll link it down below. I would say that the Yummy Skin does have more coverage and it's a little bit glowier. They both last really well and feel really great on the skin. And I just feel like this 
and this are going to be two of my go-to more medium to full coverage foundations moving into the summer. So this is another one that I would very much highly, highly recommend. Now, if you want something that is similar to these two guys, but isn't quite as glowy, the LYS Triple Fix Serum Foundation is a really great one to go to. This is such a stunning full coverage foundation that again, like just looks like skin, but still gives you that coverage. It also lasts amazingly well. And I'm giving you guys options because I also have an option if you want something more matte and the Clinique Even Better Clinical Serum Serum foundation with SPF 25 is another one that I would recommend. I have dry skin. Most of you probably already know that. And even though this is more of a matte foundation, I still find that it's very flattering on my skin and doesn't make it look dry. And what makes this guy special is actually the texture. It's quite thin. So even though it has that really full coverage and it is more on the matte side, you really do not need a lot of product. And it is just very, very lightweight. So it sits very lightly on the skin, even still while giving you that really nice coverage. So it's awesome. Let's talk some of my favorite skin tints because especially in the summertime, that's what I wear the most day to day. One of my newer favorites is the Elia Super Serum Skin Tint with SPF 40. I really like this because it's one of the few skin tints that I've tried that gives me that light coverage that I'm looking for from a skin tint, but it still makes my skin look really nice and perfected, but still obviously very natural looking because there isn't a lot of coverage in this. And sometimes skin tints like are so sheer, they don't really do too much. And there's definitely days for those types of products. But on the days that I just want a very, very light coverage foundation that doesn't feel heavy or look heavy, but still gives me like somewhat of a perfected look. This really does do the trick. And I really do like the fact that there's SPF 40 in here. It's pretty high for a foundation product. Um, I would still recommend using another SPF, but it, it is nice that it's in here. And I do like the fact that it has niacinamide, squalane, and hyaluronic acid. So it's pretty hydrating as well. Fenty Ease Drop is a classic. I've been talking about this probably for over a year at this point. When you think of like a blurring foundation, you would typically associate that with more of a matte full coverage foundation. This is one of the few skin tint products that has a nice light to medium coverage and that's very, very lightweight in texture, but that still blurs the skin. Because it has that sand matte finish, it really does a great job at kind of blurring the pores. I mean, that's kind of the whole point of this foundation. And it really just gives you that really pretty soft focus effect. But again, it's still a skin tint, so it's still very, very lightweight. I don't really wear this in the wintertime because that's when my skin is extra, extra dry. And I don't find that this works great for me when my skin is really, really dry. But in the spring and summertime, it's actually one of my favorite skin tints to wear because it lasts so well. Because because of that soft matte finish, it doesn't really like slip around on the face. So that's why I really wanted to recommend this, especially for this time of year, because it works great for the summertime when it gets really hot. Another skin tint like product that I want to recommend is a newer one. And this is the Makeup Forever HD Skin. In one of my previous vlogs, I described this as MAC face and body, but with more coverage. And I still stand by that description. MAC face and body is one of the most skin-like foundations that I've ever tried. It really just like blends and meshes into the skin. This does the exact same thing, but it has more coverage than the MAC face and body. So it gives you more of a perfected look, whereas the MAC face and body gives you more of like a a no makeup makeup type of look. And this wears so well throughout the entire day. It does not go anywhere and it just gives you that really, really nice no makeup makeup look, but with coverage. Stunning. Next, let's talk about concealers. I have three here that I wanted to recommend. Um, the Lancome Tanty Dell Ultra Wear Oliver Concealer is one that I really wanted to mention because I do feel like this is quite an underrated product. Again, I don't really hear that many people talk about it, and I think it's such an amazing full coverage concealer that really does a good job of kind of like airbrushing wherever you put this, whether that's underneath the eyes or around the face. And for a full coverage concealer, it really doesn't look heavy or cakey. I just find that it really makes the skin look perfected. For very similar reasons, I also really love the Clinique Even Better All Over Concealer and Eraser. This is one of my all-time favorite full coverage concealers because again, of the texture. Very similar to the foundation, is very lightweight and thin. So even though this has very full coverage, it really never looks heavy because the texture itself is so lightweight, but it covers exactly like a full coverage concealer. So it just doesn't give you that heaviness. So I actually love to use this guy almost in place of a foundation on days that I don't really feel like wearing a foundation. I'll put this underneath my eyes and also around my face. And I almost find that it gives my skin a foundation look without actually having to put a foundation all over my face. And then I have probably spoken about this 
multiple times in my Sephora recommendations videos, but I'm gonna do it again because this still continues to be one of my all-time favorite concealers. It's the Josie Marin Vibrancy Argon Oil Full Coverage Concealer Fluid. It's a medium coverage concealer, but it's very, very hydrating. And similar to a lot of the foundations that I just spoke about, it has this really nice skincare-like glow that just looks really nice and fresh. And I'm wearing underneath my eyes today as well. It's just like a great all-around hydrating concealer. That is it for all of the base products. So now now let's move into some cheek products and let's start off with one of my favorite categories, bronzers. Okay, so first I wanna talk about one of my current favorites. This is the Milk Makeup Bionic Bronzer. This is so good because it's quite versatile. You can get a couple different looks with it just kind of depending on how you apply it and how much you do apply. So this product is pretty sheer. It is a gel-based liquid bronzer. So it looks pretty pigmented when you first like squeeze it out, but if you take just a little bit and you blend it out onto the skin, you can get something super sheer and wearable. So if you are wearing like a no makeup makeup look and you want just a light layer of bronze, but you don't wanna go in with like a full on bronzer because sometimes it can look really obvious, especially if the rest of your makeup is very lightweight. A product like this is perfect because it will give you that very sheer wash of color, but still some color and it's a liquid. So you don't need to have like a foundation underneath for it to stick or anything. It's just perfect for a no makeup makeup look. But let's say you want something a little bit more intense. Maybe you want a little bit more of a pop to your bronzer. You can still get it with this. You just need to build it up. So I can take the product that I just applied on the back of my hand and I could start to blend it out and you can see how easily that just mesh into my skin. There's no patchiness. So I just love the fact that I'm so easily able to build on this product to get different looks with it. This is another product that I'm wearing on my skin today. I went for a medium bronzed look. You could totally use your fingers with this product too. You don't even need to use a brush. So it's just overall a very, very easy product to use. Very versatile. I love the color as well. This is time travel. Works great for my skin tone. It's just a good product. Love this. Another cream bronzer that I have not been able to stop using is the Say Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer. I really like this for every day because I was able to kind of just throw this on and it always melted into the skin and looked really nice and natural looking. It's actually quite pigmented. Here, I'll swatch on the back of my hand. And you can definitely get a nice amount of warmth with this product, but again, it's very easy to use, very easy to blend out. And I really love the sheen that this one has. Some liquid and cream bronzers have more sheen than others. This one has like a really nice, just fresh looking glow. And I find enough of a glow that I don't even need to go in with a highlighter. So I recently rediscovered the Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo and she sculpted. And I honestly don't know why this ever left my everyday makeup bag. If I had to recommend one bronzing product in this video, I actually think it would be this one, just because you don't just get one bronzer, you get two. You get a powder and a cream. I love compacts that have more than one product in them, especially more than one product that you can use together or separately because it just makes one product so versatile and so usable in so many different ways. And I really love the Patrick Ta duos specifically because I find that they combine the colors really perfectly. So this guy on the bottom is the cream and the powders at the top. And the cream is really nice because it's a little bit more of a cool toned bronzer shades. So it works really great to actually sculpt and contour the face. And then the powder is much warmer. So it's not like these two guys are the exact same shade. So if you were to layer them on top of one another, they would kind of just appear as one color. They're truly two different complete products and two different undertones. And they both do two different things. This sculpts and this warms up the face. And they both do their respected <laughs> things very, very well. Another product that I feel like I've recently fallen back in love with and rediscovered is the Kosas Golden Bronze Bronzer. It's funny because when I first tried this, I wasn't the biggest fan of it, but for some reason after rediscovering it, I feel like I have grown to appreciate this bronzer quite a bit. It's really pretty because it's a very glowy product. And I really just love the soft glow that this ends up giving the skin. It's not like too intense or too crazy or too sparkly. This is actually my go-to layering bronzer, especially when I wanna layer it on top of a cream to set it down. I I like this guy because it's quite sheer as well. Like it's not a very pigmented bronzer. It's actually quite like a hard pan, but I like that because it doesn't over apply the product. And so when I, especially when I'm layering on top of a cream, it doesn't first of all mattify it because it has a really nice glow and it also doesn't give me too much bronze. And I feel like everybody needs a glowy bronzer in the summertime. So 
these are great. Lastly, for my bronzing products, I also want to recommend the Iconic London Radiance Booster. I really love this product, um, and I have it in a couple different shades. This one in particular is in the shade Tan Glow, and I also have one that's closer to my skin tone, maybe a little bit lighter that I use more as a highlighter. Tan Glow is the color that I like to use when I want to kind of warm up very slightly my foundation and when I want to add a little bit of a glow as well. So this is what tan glow looks like on me. Um, it definitely looks more like a bronzer on my skin tone. And when you blend it out, it really doesn't look as intensely as when you just kind of like swatch it in place. On me, it just kind of adds the very lightest bit of warmth to the skin and it also obviously gives you this really, really nice glow. And it's really just one of my favorite products to use to again, warm up and add a glow to a foundation when I'm kind of just feeling extra glowy. <laughs> um, moving from bronzer, I have one single highlighter to talk about today. I feel like I need to fall back in love with highlighters. That's kind of my goal moving forward, especially go going into the summer. I need to find some highlighters that I'm just absolutely obsessed with. On most days, I kind of just use the highlighter that's next to me. If I'm using a highlighter at all, the only highlighter that I really will go out of my way to use is an oldie but a goodie. It's the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Beauty Light Wand Easy Highlighter, and this one is in the shade Spotlight. This is really like one of my most perfect highlighters because it's very reflective as you can see, but there's not really any shimmer to it. So it really just gives you like the most insane glossy glow without any type of sparkle. And that is really the exact type of highlighter that I like. If I am going to wear anything, I do want it to you know, reflect. I want it to look really pretty and glowy, but I don't want it to look too crazy obvious. And I feel like this is the most perfect compromise. I'm actually very excited to talk about these blushes. So let's get into it. I have two blushes here that I have not yet spoken about on my channel. They're actually very similar in color. One of my favorite types of blush colors to wear are these exact colors that kind of burnt red coral shade. I just feel like it's one of the prettiest colors to wear, especially in the spring and summertime, because it kind of gives you that I was out in the sun for a little bit too long type of look. It's very natural looking in that way, but it still gives you like color. So I discovered this from Laura Mercier and wow, it's beautiful. This is actually called the Tinted Moisturizer Blush, which is honestly a little bit of an odd name, I'm not gonna lie, but it's pretty much just like a, a, a liquidy blush. Sun Drenched, really the perfect name for this shade. There's really not much to say about the formula. It's a really nice liquid blush. It is what I'm wearing on my cheeks right now. It's very pigmented as you can see, but it's still quite easy to blend out. So it's really easy to work with and it gives you some pretty nice color. Like it's not super, super sheer, but it's wearable enough. I'm just really happy that I discovered this and I ended up picking it up because I will be wearing this a ton this summer. Another very similar color, but very different formula is this guy from Huda Beauty. This is one of the new Cheeky Tints in Rebel Red. I actually have the entire collection of this line, but this is really the only shade from that line that I like. I don't really vibe very much with the other colors, but this color definitely spoke to me. So while this is a liquid blush, this comes in a stick and you can just draw it on your face like that. It has a really nice sheen to it. It's very gel-like in texture. And what I really like about this one in particular is it does have this really nice glowy sheen to it. So it does also give a little bit of a sheen to the cheeks. I am wearing this actually on top of the Laura Mercier blush. So I'm wearing this on the bottom and then I put a little bit of this on top and you can see the sheen that my cheeks have. That's from this. And they actually layered really beautifully. It was my first time putting them both together and I think this is going to be a new combo of mine. I have three other blushes that I wanted to recommend. I definitely wanted to recommend the Rose Ink Lip and Cheek Colors. Really any color from the line works. Fox Glove is one of my favorites. Obviously you can see a theme of what some of my favorite blush colors are. This is actually very much in the same family as these guys over here. The formula is slightly more putty-like the best way to describe it. It's not as like lightweight and sheer as something like this, for example, that literally almost feels like a, a lightweight gel. This definitely has more of like a thicker texture to it, but because of that texture, I find that it does last nicely on the cheeks. It's still a cream, so creams typically just don't last as long as like powders do, but um, I find that this type of formula does 
lasts a little bit longer than a typical cream because it kind of sticks to the cheeks in a way. For powder blush, very big fan of the Huda Beauty Glowish Cheeky Vegan Blush Powders. This one is in the shade Caring Coral and this one has been my favorite. I really like this because it has a gorgeous glow to it, similar to a lot of the other um, powders from Glowish. They all have this really nice sheen without the shimmer. Again, you can see a theme, you can see what I like. I like a sheen without the shimmer. And this, and this does it for me. And I had kind of strayed away from powder blushes because I really do love the look of a cream on the cheeks. I love the glow that it gives. And this, I find, doesn't compromise that glow that I really love. The color in particular is really fun. It's kind of like a brighter coral, definitely not as red toned as the other shades that I showed you guys. The last blush that I wanted to recommend probably is not gonna come as a surprise because I haven't been able to shut up about this recently. This is the Rare Beauty a uh, liquid blush in the shade Hope. As I basically just demonstrated, I really mostly wear these like burnt coral shades. That's my blush shade of choice and I don't really go towards pinks as often, but this pink blush is really, really pretty because it's quite soft. It's not like Barbie in your face pink. It's like a very, very, very soft pink. This color just reminds me of like a baby doll. It's just so pretty. And if you're looking for a long wearing liquid blush, this is one of the more long wearing liquid blushes that I've tried from Rare Beauty. Very good. Now let's move on to the eye products. So the first eyeshadow product that I want to recommend, I feel like I recommend this on a lot of my Sephora VIBs, but I'm gonna do it again because they're just so good. They're the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks. I just feel like these are such great basics to have in a makeup collection. I really love cream shadows because you can use them in a couple different ways. You can use them as a base for a powdered eyeshadow look. You can use them on their own or you can use them as eyeliners. And the Caviar Sticks are one of those formulas that I feel like does work really great in all of those ways. On my lid right now, I am wearing the shade Metallic Taupe. I'll zoom you guys in real quick so you can see what it looks like. This is actually one of my favorite kind of glowy champagne eyeshadows because it just gives you such a stunning effect to the lid. Coco is more of a boring shade, but I think a really great basic to have, and I use this so often. This is a beautiful, very, very dark, brown. I love how rich and deep this brown is. It's like an almost black type of brown. And I use this very often, especially when I want to do um, a smoky wing. I'll use this as the base and it works really, really great and it stays in place. Another eyeshadow product that I've been really enjoying lately is this guy from Kaja. So this is the Beauty Bento in the shade Smolder Season. And you get three different eyeshadows in here. You have a very, 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 very shimmery champagne. In the middle, you have a very, very, very shimmery taupe. And then on the bottom, you have a matte brown. Putting this on the lid is like a show-stopping moment. It gives you so much shimmer, it's so stunning, and it is just such an easy way to just quickly elevate your look just by dabbing a little bit of this color all over your lid. I love a shimmery lid, and this just gives it to me. <laughs> the one thing I will say that is kind of disappointing with these products is that you do experience a little bit of fallout with it, but I would just recommend using a good base so that it really sticks, and then you, you won't experience that fallout. An eyeshadow palette that I wanted to recommend is a new one here from Natasha Denona. Um, I feel like the the event is always a good time to pick up a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette because they are so pricey that it's nice to get them on a little bit of a discount. And I feel like they've been coming out with such fun palettes lately. This one is especially fun and I thought was a really great option, especially for the spring and summertime. This is the new pastel palette and this is obviously filled with pastel eyeshadow colors. Today on my lids, I'm wearing the shade Feather, Dainty and Tulle all of like the pinky lilac shades and they're just so fun. I, I will say a lot of the pastels in here are very soft and subdued when applied to the lids, but I actually really like that about them because I feel like it makes them very wearable. I am all about wearable color. I love it. Um, I feel like that's the best way to wear color when you don't wanna feel like too overdone. For example, putting a lime green like this, it looks really intense, but if you just put a nice wash of this color all over the lid, it's actually quite wearable. You would be surprised. Now let's move into mascaras. I have four here that I wanted to recommend. I've been very into the very intense lash look lately and all four of these mascaras are the ones that give it to me. One of my newest favorites is for MAC and um, you can get MAC at Sephora in Canada. So I would definitely recommend checking out the MAC section if you are based in Canada. Stack mascara is unreal. 
It is so buildable, so intense. You can get more of like a light dramatic effect, or you can get a very, very dramatic effect with this mascara just by building it up. And it builds up so well without getting clumpy. It's what I'm wearing on my lashes today. They definitely look very nice and like full and intense, but also not clumpy. The Lancome Lashy Doll is another one of my favorites. This one also really checks all the boxes for me. It gives me length, volume. It lifts my lashes really, really well too. Benefit Roller Lash is like an OG favorite. I feel like this is a less intense version of the Lancome Lashy Doll. This one does an especially really good job of curling your lashes. The Dior Iconic Over Curl is a really great mascara, especially for intense volume. This one is the waterproof version. It's actually not the one I would recommend. I would recommend the original version. I just don't have it here with me. I, I'll probably pick it up actually myself because I don't have it anymore. Now that I'm looking at all the wands, really besides the Max Stack, the Lashy Doll, the Benefit Roller Lash, and the Over Curl all have very similar wands. So I can see why I like them all so much. I actually almost forgot to talk about powders. So I'm going to very quickly chat about them. Not like you guys didn't know what I would talk about. Kosas Cloud Set, okay? <laughs> Is this a surprise to anybody? Probably not, unless you're just stumbling upon my video. Well, first of all, hi. I'm a Kosas Cloud Set stan. I have very dry skin and I don't like most powders. This is one of the powders that really just works so well for me. It does a great job at setting my makeup, of course, but it's a very lightweight powder that has a stunning blurring effect that literally just like makes your pores disappear. I've also been really enjoying the Rare Beauty setting powder. I kind of strayed away from loose powders for a while just because I feel like pressed powders are more convenient to use but I do really like the way that this makes my skin look. I find that it does a really nice job of blurring my skin and the shade light has this really nice pinky undertone, which I find does a great job of brightening up the skin. And it's a very like soft and finely milled powder, so it doesn't look heavy. It's just like a good product. Lastly, in the makeup category, let's talk about some lip products. There were so many lip products that I could have recommended in this video. Like I could have done just a pure lip product video. And actually I recently did, I did do um, a video talking about some of my favorite lip products that I'm obsessed with. So I can link that down below if you want to check it out. So because I recently did that video, um, I really narrowed it down to just a couple lip products to talk about in this one. The Merit Lipsticks. Wow, these are so nice. So many of you guys were messaging me about this, being like, Jamie, you have to try the new Merit Lipsticks. You're gonna love them. And you guys know me because these are so good and I have not been able to stop wearing them. They have been like my go-to day-to-day -day lipsticks. Um, it's actually what I'm wearing on my lips currently. I'm wearing the shade Slip and they're just really great lipsticks. They're very comfortable to wear. They have a nice bomb-like texture. Slip is probably my favorite. It's a really nice neutral brown. And I also like the shade Baby, which is more of like a softer pink. I feel like they're just really good, solid day-to-day -day lipsticks. I didn't do this on purpose, but I have two Merit lip products here. This is the Merit Tinted Lip Oil. This is another lip product that I haven't been able to stop talking about. This shade in particular is Marrakesh. I actually have every single shade in the lip oil collection because I like them so much. It's really one of the most perfect lip products to just throw on because it gives you a little bit of color, it gives you some sheen, and it gives you that nice hydrating feeling as well. Then I have a new gloss favorite here. It is the Lip Glacé in the shade Praline, and this is a golden, uber, uber, uber sparkly lip gloss. In my lip product video that I recently did, I mentioned that I always like to have some type of sparkly lip gloss in my lip gloss rotation because it's one of my favorite type of glosses to layer on top of nude lip colors because I just find it enhances them so nicely and I love like a sparkly lip. And this is basically just that for me at the moment. It has such a nice fine sparkle to it. So it's not like, wow, she has sparkly lips, but it's like, oh, her lips kind of look really amazing right now. I wonder why that is. Oh, maybe it's because the light is reflecting off of her lips in the most beautiful way. Are those like light sparkles? Yeah, they are. You see how that didn't change the color of the lipstick at all. It just added this nice sheen and in person you can see it a lot more, but it has this really nice fine sparkle. For lip liners, there's so many that I love. The Makeup Forever uh, Artist Liners, are some of my favorites, Anywhere Caffeine, Endless Cacao, Limitless Brown, all great, but I wanted to recommend one that I that I only more recently started to speak about. This is the Buxom Powerline Plumping Lip Liner, and this one in particular is in the shade Hush Hush Henna. Hush Hush Henna is a really nice soft pink, and it works really well 
I find with the Merit lipstick and slip actually, and also Baby. I love how they apply. They really just glide on. They have a lot of pigment to them um, and they last really, really well. All right, those are all of the makeup products that I have here to talk about. It was a lot. Now let's talk about some skincare and hair care and body care products. So let's first talk about my favorite skincare products. I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. I don't have some of the products here with me, but I will insert photos so you guys can see what they look like. I double cleanse every single night and I've tried so many different types of oil-based cleansers. And the Dermalogica Pre-Cleanse is one that I pretty much always go back to because I feel like it's one of the most effective oil-based cleansers. It does a really, really good job of breaking down makeup, but it doesn't like leave my skin feeling oily after wiping it off. For cleansers, if you want just like a great basic cleanser, the You to the People Kale and Spinach Green Tea Superfood Cleanser is one of my favorites. I've been using it for a couple years now, I think, at this point, probably. Yeah, and I go through bottles of this stuff. It just does a really nice job of making your face feel really nice and clean, but it doesn't strip it. If you want a cleanser that doesn't just cleanse your face, it actually does something for your skin, I am a big fan of the Ankylis Fulvic Acid Brightening Cleanser. This actually really helps quite a bit with texture. So when I feel like I have some texture on my skin, I'll put this on and I'll wash my face as I normally do, and then I'll just let it sit for like 30 seconds and I'll wash it off and my skin is noticeably smooth because of the fulvic acid in here, it does actually help to like very lightly chemically exfoliate the face. And it just is so good and so affordable too. And especially with the discount on top of it, the Wishful Yo Detox Face and Body Enzyme Scrub is definitely one of my favorites. Now I feel like scrub is not really the right word for this type of product. This product more so feels like very, very fine sand and you put it all over your face and you very lightly go in circular motions and it very, 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 very lightly physically exfoliates, but mainly it chemically exfoliates. And if I want to literally get rid of all of the dry texture on my face. This is what I always go to and it does the trick and it does it so well. It makes my skin feel so, so baby soft and it just works every time. Since we are going into the summer months, even though we should be wearing sunscreen throughout the entire year, here are some of my favorite sunscreens that you can find at Sephora. Um, so for the face, two of my current favorites are the Biosan Squalane and Zinc Sheer Mineral Sunscreen and the Josie Marin Get Even Sunscreen. Sun milk. Both of these are mineral sunscreens. The Josie one is SPF 33. The Biosauce one is SPF 30. And I really love these, especially for underneath makeup because they really do sink in um, and they don't disturb my makeup at all. And they also don't feel or smell like sunscreen. I'm very, very big on texture and scent when it comes to sunscreen because if it's too greasy or if it feels too heavy or if it's a scent that, that I am able to notice throughout the day, then it really turns me off and these don't. Now let's get into some body care and body creams. For body creams, I have been loving the Necessaire body cream. I like it because it's actually not fragrance and I'm not always in the mood for a fragrance body cream. I also love how quickly it just melts into the skin. It does not leave any type of greasy residue. I can put it on right before going to bed and I can go right into my sheets and not feel like I'm getting cream everywhere. Hello, future Jamie here. I wanted to talk about one more body cream that I totally forgot to mention and I could not post this video without talking about this cream because it is one of the most gorgeous body creams I've ever put on my body and it's from Kapari and it's the Ultra Restore Body Butter with Hyaluronic Acid. One of the highlights of my day is dipping my fingers into this tub of cream because the texture is just so incredibly satisfying. It describes itself as a whipped texture and that's exactly what it is. It literally looks and feels air whipped and when you put it on your body, it just melts into the skin immediately, makes your skin feel so incredibly soft. I apply this as many times as possible throughout the day because it just feels so nice on the skin. Um, just the whole experience of applying it and also how it makes my skin feel. It's one of my favorite body creams I've ever tried. I also want to recommend the Necessaire deodorant. I've been using it a ton lately and it works really, really well. And I love how invisible it is. It goes on completely clear and it doesn't like get sticky or weird and it just like works. It's really good. And it also has some nice skincare ingredients as well that's supposed to 
uh, de decrease like bumps underneath the arms. For hair care products, I really just want to talk about these two guys. Um, there's a lot of other hair products that I really, really enjoy, but I feel like I haven't given a lot of love to these two. This product from Orbe is a product that I really feel like I cannot live without. It is the Super Shine Moisturizing Cream. I mainly use this when my hair is dry, either when it's curly, when it's straight, no matter what my hair is looking like, this will be going into my hair because it essentially just makes my hair shiny and it also tames my frizz and just makes my hair look more smooth. And it also doesn't weigh it down or make it feel heavy. Sometimes hair oils can do that and I can put like so much of this stuff in my hair and it will never make it look greasy. Then we have the Amika Perk Up Dry Shampoo. This is the new jumbo version. And this is such an awesome dry shampoo. I typically like to avoid using dry shampoo because I find it actually makes my hair feel dirtier. Even though it makes it look less greasy, it makes it feel just really gross. And I really love this dry shampoo because it does the job of like soaking up the oil in my hair, but it doesn't make it feel gross. It's also pretty invisible as well. It doesn't leave any type of white cast. All, all in all, it's just a really, really great, very effective dry shampoo. This is a product that really checks all the boxes. And I love the new jumbo version because you can really go through dry shampoo very quickly. <laughs> all right, guys, I think that is actually it. I spoke about a whole lot of products today. I really hope that you enjoyed it and found some inspiration for the Sephora spring savings event. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments, any of your recommendations, please also leave them down below. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up and if you want to join the fam, hit the subscribe button and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.